Good things normally isn't stopped by a singular opposition. I know when the quarterback hands me the ball, it's gonna take at least two, at least two defenders to bring me down. And I'm not going down on first contact. Also know when I just recently refractured my shoulder. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I actually refractured my shoulder a week ago. It's gonna take more than that to keep me from being great. You're gonna have to do something else. I'm gonna need a broken leg, torn ACL, and you guys, you guys should think the same because you are great people. It should take more than one thing to stop you from achieving whatever your goal is. And similar, as much as people don't like this Alter Guys deck, it does take more than one thing to bring this deck down. Fortunately for us, there's quite a few great things that are good against the meta that just so happens to be good against Alter Guys. And I'm gonna be giving you guys the guide on how to beat Alter Guys. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys wanna see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and hit that notification bell because, well, we just too strong. Also wanna take the time to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. Also wanna give a mad shout out to our newest Patreon, Joshua Walter. Thank you so much for being subscribed and I welcome you to the clan. Without further ado, I present you How to Beat Alter Guys. This is a sequel to our Destroying the Meta series and I'm extremely excited to keep giving you guys to How to Beat videos. Now, before we start talking about how to beat Alter guys, I think it's really important that we start talking about the deck itself. Who knows, maybe after this video, some of you guys might even want to play Alter guys because it's a very powerful deck into this format. So Alter guys are a group of strange, ghost-like cybernetic female creatures that are a play of words between Alter and Poltergeist. If you guys don't know what a Poltergeist is, it's like a ghost. That, that's basically the best way to say it. Every single one of these Alter Guys monsters are a play on words between a computing network and, of course, mythology. For example, Alter Guys Hexia is a play on words between Hexadecimal and Hestia, the myth mythological, the myth, the mythological creature. I'm sorry, I can't even get that correctly. Another example is Pixel is based on a pixie and, of course, a pixel. That is so cool between Alter Guys that they have a play on words between mythology and a computing system. I thought that that was something to definitely look at. Alter Guys' biggest strength is that they're a very consistent and disruptive deck. The ability to activate multi-faker protocols, uh, get sequitos to your side of the field to disrupt your cards. Mulasik is probably one of the best underrated cards of the format, being able to send cards on your opponent's side of the field to the graveyard by attacking, and it can attack directly. The deck is just really good. It's probably one of the best control decks outside of True Drake in this format and it does run a little bit differently than true draco because while true draco does run a ton of monsters or not necessarily a ton of monsters a ton of draw cards and control like cards through huge attack monsters and disruptor like cards the entire deck of alter guys is just one huge flowing disruption so while they might both be anti-meta like decks they flow differently between each other like i said true draco is more of a draw smasher face type anti-meta deck while Altergeist is more of a control the board, disrupt your opponent's plays, and keep the synergy going type of decks. Now, Altergeist does have a really good thing. They take advantage of a card called Infinite Impermanence, being able to use it from your hand to negate an opponent's monster effect, and trigger one of your best cards, Altergeist Multi Faker, to spell summon itself to your side of the field on your opponent's turn sometimes, sometimes even on the first turn, to give continuous disruption. Now, that is one huge advantage for Altergeist, and I think that if you guys are seriously invested into an Altergeist deck, that Infinite Impermanence might be a must card for your deck. Like with every great deck, of course it has is weaknesses. Now, Altergeist are very trap reliant. You can see builds playing anywhere between 15 to 20 trap cards, meaning that you're probably gonna be best going first. Going second doesn't put you in the best position, doesn't put you in a horrible position, because again, we have cards like Typhoon and Infinite Impermanence to activate and still trigger off your multi-faker, but it doesn't put you in the best of positions if you don't open those type of cards. Also, it's search card personal, personal spoofing is not an Altergeist card, and it's kind of like needed to get the combos going. Without that card, the Altergeist deck does struggle, as well as not being able to get out your multi-fakers, the deck will struggle. The next best, the next worst thing about Altergeist is his incredibly low attack. Now, that could be changed through making Altergeist slick monsters, or if your opponent decides to destroy one of your Waking the Dragons, but overall, if you summon a monster and don't really provoke Altergeist, as well as not allow them to get uh, multiple monsters on their field, 
builds or just have a non-targetable monster or unaffected monster, all the guys will really struggle. That's actually a part of the deck's weaknesses. But now that we're talking about the strengths, the weaknesses, and what the Alter Guys deck is about, we can talk about those major weaknesses and how we can exploit those weaknesses with certain cards that you guys can use to destroy Alter Guys. Now, the reason why Alter Guys is so powerful is because, like I said in the beginning of the video, normally one of these cards or a singular card is not going to shut this deck down. Unlike against decks like True Drake on Burning Abyss, Abyss Dweller does a really, really good job against Sky Striker, Notoria Beast does an amazing job against Goki. Same thing, Abyss Dweller actually does a pretty decent job at shutting those decks down. Alter Guys doesn't really have that because while there are a plenty of cards that can shut Alter Guys down, Alter Guys actually has built in counters as well as some good side deck options to counter your counters. So you have to be really wary on what you're doing against the deck. The first way to beat it is just summon a monster that's stronger than all of the Alter Guys's that can't be targeted. Cards like Cosmo Dark Destroyer are really powerful against Alter Guys, mainly because it's a card that they struggle to attack over to and it's really hard to target because it can't be targeted through the effects of Silquidos and Mula Seek. Uh, the deck is also struggling against cards like Ultimate Falcon or Boral Low Dragon. Two monsters are a little bit more popular because of Waking the Dragons being so powerful inside of this format, and as well as Boral Low Dragon being the best Link 4 in the game. I'm not saying that summoning these monsters will guarantee you a win, but at the right time in the right spot, these guards can put Altergeist in a really bad position, seeing that they're very strong monsters that can't be targeted or are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Now, Alter Guys does have a built-in counter to these, this type of strategy, mainly due to Alter Guys Hex Steel, which gains attack equal to the attack of your Alter Guys monster that it points to. If you point it to a Marionetter, it's strong enough to attack over a Borlo Cosmo Dark Destroyer, and not an Ultimate Falcon, but Ultimate Falcon is a very hard card to bring out. So the deck does have a soft counter against it, but if you can prevent Alter Guys Hex Steel from hitting the field, then your opponent is definitely going to struggle with a strong monster that's unaffected by card effects or can't be target another great way to prevent alter guys actually i think this is the most practical way because a lot of these cards you're probably already main boarding if you can stop alter guys multi faker from activating and resolving its effects you're going to win that game that is probably in my humble opinion alter guys's biggest weakness is that they're very reliant on that monster bringing out other monsters to their side of the field to continuously gain advantage through the effects of their trap cards so there are some awesome ways to do it such as goes and match goes and match is really powerful mainly because Alter Guys Multifaker is a dark and the monsters that they want to bring out are all different attributes something that you can use against the Alter Guys archetype now you don't want to use Rivalry of the Warlords because all of your all of the Alter Guys monsters are spellcaster goes and match is the way to go ghost ogre and snow rapid as well as ash blossom and joyous spring are also prime ways to stop alter guys multi-faker because while alter guys are while ghost ogre can destroy the multi-faker ash blossom can can prevent the other monster from summoning itself normally when you see a multi-faker being summoned silquidos is a monster to follow mainly because silquidos can bounce the multi-faker back into your hand to disrupt your opponent once again now silquidos can't activate and resolve his effect if he's the only monster on the field this is all also pretty much easily countered by your opponent to summoning another Altergeist monster, whether it's uh, Silquidos that they drew in their hand or just following up with another monster to a uh, combo with Silquidos. But nonetheless, this is just some really good in-game or in-deck options that you guys have with those Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits and Ash Blossoms and Joyous Spring. Coincidentally, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and Ghost Ogre can stop per Personal Spoofing, which is a pretty good card. Now, Ghost Ogre can't stop the activation of Personal Sto Spoofing, it being flipped face up and using its effect at that time but any other time after that ghost ogre is a great card same thing with altergeist or i'm sorry yeah altergeist protocol really good at stopping that card as well another way to stop altergeist multi-faker is infinite impermanence yes just straight up activating infinite impermanence to negate altergeist multi-faker is really powerful and the next best thing about infinite impermanence is that if you're setting it face down to use it to stop one on a multi-faker the card in the same column can't be used there are plenty of times where altergeist players may even sometimes forget that infinite permanence has a great set effect to prevent multi-faker from activating its effects and then it also shuts down whatever trap cards are in that same column all guys players you probably should be more aware of where you put your multi-faker put it in a column you're not going to use now there are quite a few ways Alter Guys can still get around this. They have cards like Silquidos and Mulisic to bounce cards or send cards like Goes and Match from the field to the graveyard to start off with their combos. Ghost Ogre and Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring are negate cards, so Alter Guys Protocol 
Yeah, Alt Altergeist Protocol is a recyclable, searchable thing. So it's also a card that does exist. And furthermore, while Infinite Permanence is good, it's susceptible to the same thing. And as well, uh, they could always just have another copy. Like if they have another way to, to activate and resolve a multi-faker, you still might be in trouble because the multi faker is still on board. They can still manipulate the board to their advantage. This time, maybe having three monsters on the field during the next turn or whenever it is applicable to activate multi faker's effect. The last way to beat Altergeist is actually a way I do not recommend for newer players. Why? Because you have to go about it a certain way. If you just start playing Disruption in this certain particular fashion, you could be feeding them for another W on their chart. That's right, we're gonna just go for the head. Disrupting their back row is probably one of the best ways to beat Altergeist, but you have to do it in a certain way. There's three ways to do it. You can completely stun their traps, which is probably the most safest route, but you're probably gonna have to OTK them or put a serious ton of damage on the board where they, before they go live again. You can either B, destroy their face up, which is another safe alternative, but now you have to worry about the face down cards, or C, you can destroy everything, which isn't a recommended thing because then they summon ultimate falcon to their side of the field. And you're looking at a 3,500 beater that if you can't handle it, that card will probably win the game on its own right. So stunning them is probably the best route that a lot of players use. Cards like uh, Red Reboot, I was going to call it Gozen Match. Cards like Red Reboot and Evenly Matched are really good against Altergeist. Why? Because Red Reboot allows you to stun one of their trap cards. Yes, they get to place another trap card, but they can't use trap cards for the rest of the turn. Use this in your OTK like decks. Goes in match, or I'm sorry, <laughs> evenly match is a great card because it takes away all of their control cards, leaving them with one card left. And you know an altar guides that cannot function with just one card on the field, almost no matter what the card is. Now, obviously there's some couple of cards out there, but still, it's really hard for them to function after losing a, quite a few cards on their board and you being able to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Cards like Jinzo and Denko Sekker are also pretty decent against them. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because cards like Altergeist, Mulaseek, and Silquidos exist. Also, the same thing fits for Royal Decree because Silquidos and Mulaseek can get rid of those cards with ease. Now, if you are playing those monsters inside of your deck or siding those monsters in, then you might want to be a little bit more prepared. Preventing their monster effects of Silquido and Mulaseek could be a game winner because Royal Decree, Jinzo, and Danko Sekka are pretty good cards. You're just going to have to back it up with an additional card to prevent your opponent from getting rid of it. Another way to do it is just to completely destroy their face outs. Without personal spoofing or Altergeist Protocol, you're in a pretty good position. Altergeist Protocol is probably one of their best cards, one of their searchable cards, so you're probably gonna have to deal with three, and personal spoofing is their searcher. You cut off that card, they have less access to Altergeist Multifigure. The last way I don't want anyone to do is just go ahead and massively try to destroy all of the cards. Why? Because it puts you in a risky situation of being waking the dragon so they can summon ultimate falcon on you and now you're in again a pretty bad spot. But if you can pull off cards like Black Rose Dragon or Twin Twisters to blind back row, then hey, be my guest. You might just win the game because of it. Thank you guys. Oh, one more thing I actually want to talk about. Inspector Border is really powerful against Alter guys. That's actually the sleeper card I wanted to talk to you guys about because they don't actually exceed Synchro. They, they don't do any of that. So you summon your Inspector Border and then they're like, huh, how do I get over this card? And the fact that it doesn't activate, you know they play Solemn Strikes and stuff. It's a pretty decent card against them. Some great decks against the Alter Guy strategy. True Draco is really good because you already play Inspector Border or you play Amaro Owato, which are really good against the deck. Another great strategy is Six Samurais. Ironically, they can make cards like, you know, Great Shogun Sheen and Legendary Six Samurai Sheen, and those are pretty bad against the Altergeist strategy, or Cyber Dragon. A Red Reboot and a Swifty OTK could mean doom for the opponent. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like, and if you didn't, let us know in the comment section what we could do to be better. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.